So I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let that kind of roll for a minute or so before I get going. Okay, well, welcome. Um, it's nice to see everybody. It's been a little while and um, we are off to the races now that um, the spring season is upon us and um, we're kind of honing in on the end of the year. There is so much going on um, and there's so much going on that a lot of our regular participants aren't able to join tonight. So Anne and I are gonna tag team a little bit um, and fill you in um, from our, colleagues perspectives. So Anne, I know has an update um, from Dr. Kelly from the superintendent's office. Sure. So Dr. Kelly was not able to join us this evening, but she wanted me to um, let everyone know that there is a board of ed meeting on Thursday night. And at that meeting, the board will adopt the budget that will then be voted on by the community. And the budget um, proposed is under the tax cap. So, uh, just giving people a heads up on that. Um, I think that was the major update from her. And that's it. Thank you. Um, and Aaron, any news from the counseling department? You know, lots of news, yeah. lots of news. There might be news in everybody's inbox as well. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, nice to see so many familiar names. Uh, just a few updates that are really more, I guess, kind of forward looking, if you will. Um, but first, uh, this week and, and a little bit of last week and next week's a pretty big week for the seniors. Uh, so for all the senior parents that are on the call, please know that we are here if um, you need to reach out to us regarding any decisions or conversations moving forward. So I want you to keep that in mind. Um, uh, also, um, the junior workshops are going to be picking back up after spring break. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to send something out, I think, when we get back from break, because I'm sure the students are going to forget a lot about school during next week off. Um, so we're going to pick those back up on the first of uh, the first day of the cycle oh. when we return, which I think is like April 2nd or something to that effect. Uh, but information will go out to parents and juniors um, regarding those resuming. And we're going to turn the juniors over to the College Kickstart software. That's, I think, has been really helpful for the seniors and helping them sort of um, come up with a well-balanced college list. So more to come on that, um, in addition to talking to them about recommendation letters and their college essay and getting some seniors to come speak to them about um, sort of what they can expect um, you know, this summer and the first semester of senior year. Um, the sophomores are wrapping up their second round of workshops with the school psychologist and the interns, um, and the counselors were there um, in their English and history classes uh, at the beginning of this month. Um, so now all these sophomore parents should have access to Maya Learning, which is our college search platform where you can see sort of historical admissions data uh, along with just doing some college research. So if you're a sophomore parent and you didn't see that email, please reach out to me so I can get you onto that site. Um, and then I think just lastly, I, I believe this went out last night on April 25th. It's a Thursday in our auditorium. We are gonna have the editor in chief of the Princeton Review. Um, name is Rob Franick. Um, come speak to parents and students in grades 9, 10, and 11 about um, finding best fit colleges. So I'm actually really excited about that. Um, you know, as the editor-in-chief of Princeton Review, um, they get a lot of data just like of a, over a, a breadth of, of, I guess, data points. Uh, so it'll be interesting to hear from him sort of trends he's seen and Sort of he's also visiting colleges um, quite frequently, frequently. Um, so it should be really interesting. So that's April 25th, and um, I will send out more information when we get back from break as well, just to remind everybody to um, show up to the auditorium. Um, and I think that's it from, from me. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Is that um, meeting going to be cast out on the YouTube as well? You know, I haven't, um, it's definitely gonna be in person. I can speak to uh, Rob about filming it. 
Um, and I, I can I can find out and get back to you. Um, I was actually thinking maybe we can put it in some of the week ahead stuff that you send out so I can um, try to do that before Friday and, and let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, and I know Joe wasn't able to join. Did he give you material to present? So uh, Joe Haven, our athletic director is at a scrimmage because he's coaching our varsity boys lacrosse team. Um, and he just wanted to let me know, let all of you know that uh, spring sports have begun. So uh, just check the athletics website for those schedules, but they're in full swing at this point. So I think um, that's the majority of what's happening in the athletics department. Okay, great. Um, I have the update from the foundation. It's um, quick. It says the foundation's regular spring grant cycle is underway and the board has received an array of applications in the arts, athletics, STEM, and health and wellness for the benefit of the students. Um, the board will thoroughly review the application over the next two months and vote on them later this spring in May. Um, and just to reiterate, your donations make the grant program possible. So please consider making a gift if you have not done so already. Um, the goal is always to achieve 100% participation from school families. Um, and then I'm supposed to put the link to the foundation in the chat, which I will do um, before we hang up. Um, you guys will be able to see that there is a ton going on over the next couple of weeks. Um, but before I do that, uh, Jenny Jaquette, are you on? From sustainability. Yes, I see you. Yes, I'm here. You are. Yep. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, thanks. I'm just going to talk very, very quickly. My name is Jenny Jaquette. I am the one of the co-chairs of the sustainability committee, along with Maria Trejanian. And uh, we are working with the administration towards becoming a green ribbon school. Uh, one of the initiatives that we are taking to do that is to reduce the use of single-use plastic water bottles. Um, we have been very successful in the PTA and in PTA run events in doing that. Um, the luncheons and the teas and recitals and concerts, the um, parents and teachers involved with planning those have done a phenomenal job of adapting to our new sort of standard operating procedure. Um, so thank you so much. We've saved ourselves from using thousands of plastic water bottles and we've saved, saved a huge chunk of change as well. Um, and also thank you to Mike Lee um, because it definitely, we have needed his help in doing that. So now we are turning our attention to the sports um, and trying to reduce our single use plastic water bottle use on, yes. on in sporting events. So um, what I we would like to ask, we, we did send out a new hydration plan, uh, went out with the PTA and it also, um, I believe went out in an Instagram post. Uh, so hopefully you have seen that. Um, we're simplifying things, the main, Difference is we're asking the athletes to bring their own refillable water bottle to all practices and games. It's very simple. Um, they're very capable of doing that. If they don't want to fill it before they go to school because it's heavy, they can go with it empty and they can fill it in various places around the school and the bottle fill stations. Um, we have also, Philippa Freeman and I wrote a grant um, that was approved by the foundation and we have Bronco, at the Bronco Barn, we have bottle refill stations there. So they can fill their water bottles there or refill their water bottles there. And the athletic department um, and the maintenance department has agreed to provide giant 10 gallon coolers with water and ice um, for all home games on Chambers, Hayes, and in the gym. And for away games, along with that grant, um, we got about 10 five gallon rollable coolers that are gonna be kept in the athletic department right outside the training room that coaches can arrange to have filled with ice and water for away games. So that can be the refilling option. We are really, really pleased begging, asking parents to um, refrain from bringing coolers filled with ice with 48 um, water bottles and 48 Gatorade bottles to every game. Uh, certainly, um, if it's a 90 degree day and it's it's emergency, of course, our kids' health is the most important thing, um, but we're really trying to get away from that habit um, that seems to be very ingrained <laughs> Uh, in our in our sporting events. So we're trying to get away from that. So we have systems in place. If you could just get your athletes to bring their own refillable water bottle to all practices and games, um, there is going to be uh, options for them to fill and refill those water bottles and they should be healthy and hydrated. And um, we will be using less plastic, which is good for everybody. That's it. Thanks, Jenny. 
um, it's been really nice to see that um, those coolers around the school and at all the PTA events, and they really, they really do save a lot of money and a lot of water bottles when you, um, when you finish up those events. So thank you for getting that going. Um, there are a couple of events. I mean, there's two pages of things happening over the next couple of months in the high school. So it, as we all know, spring is a very busy time and it's going to feel like a race um, as soon as we get back from spring break. But there are a couple of things that I wanted to highlight in particular. Um, this Thursday night, there's a panel discussion about the hottest careers shaping tomorrow um, that the DEI Council is sponsoring. They have five great presenters and a great moderator. Um, and these are always just fabulous, informative events. Um, you should go, you should bring your kids. Um, and then there are a couple other things that I've been asked to give an update on from the graduation chairs and the senior class parents. Uh, reminder to all senior parents, the mom prom and pop pop is coming up on April 11th. Um, it's a really fun tradition and a rare opportunity to get dressed up with your kid and spend some time with them and um, their busy friends before they get to, um, to oh, go. I'm going to do Rowan next, this time next year, we'll be going to the mom prom. <laughs> um, time is like, is flying by. So yeah, the juniors will be hitting the mom prom and the pop pop next year very quickly. Um, tickets are available on membership toolkit. Um, so take a look there. And then um, also coming up very soon, April 15th, tickets to the graduation dinner at Cybernoi will go on sale. Um, it sells out really quickly. Um, tickets are non-referable, non-transferable non and non-refundable. So before April 15th, please think through your reservations. Um, the largest reservation is for 12 people. Um, and details are in your emails. Um, and also there's the um, graduation team has put up a very extensive website on the Bronxville School website for all of the end of year activities that the seniors will be coming up um, and, and doing as they head out of here. Um, and I think that's, those are the big ones that I wanted to touch on. Um, and then we are going to be rolling very quickly into the end of year performances and um, ACT and SAT uh, mock fundraisers from the junior class and car wash season. Um, so just keep an eye on your emails. Um, it's going to be busy. That's all I have from my end. And I know Anne has even more. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so I just have a few things I thought it would be worth reviewing. Um, as Emily said, we have a lot going on between now and the end of the year. So please make sure at least once a week, you take a look at the week ahead, uh, which will contain a lot of information about these events. Uh, we have in the high school, we have a field trip deadline of April 15th, which means field trips need to happen before April 15th. And the reason behind that is we want students back on un uninterrupted into class before AP exams. So when we get back from break, there are quite a few field trips happening. Um, our art department is taking a couple trips. Our chorus uh, is going to be going to Hamilton and a choral workshop there. Our thespian society is going to see Back to the Future. Our sophomore class is going to be traveling to the Jacob Byrne Center in Pleasantville to see a documentary directly related to the English 10 curriculum. Uh, and then if you are the parent of a junior in May, I think it's May 20th, our junior class voted to take a trip to the bowling alley. So um, you've probably received an email to sign up for that. So, and then during senior shadowing, I think our AP Lit students are invited to go see the Great Gatsby musical as part of senior shadowing if they'd like to do that. Um, so a lot of different things that our faculty are coordinating, including the French exchange. Our French students are in Paris right now, and they will be there for a couple of days and then traveling to their host families and the host school. So they'll be there through the end of spring break. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of other things on the horizon. Well, one, 
is uh, the fact that on April 8th, we have a solar eclipse and we're not in the zone of totality, but I believe our location will experience something like 90% of the full solar eclipse. So the, the whole district is, is planning an event that day. We're going to get all the details for it and share it with parents, um, hopefully tomorrow or Thursday. But we expect, assuming the weather cooperates, um, it is taking place at the end of the day. I think it begins at like 2 p.m., 2.15 and runs till 3.30. But we did uh, get glasses for all of our students and we're going to be taking the high school out onto chambers field the middle school on hayes and third through fifth grade on the front lawn to to view the solar eclipse with a number of activities and the pta is supporting with uh solar eclipse themed snacks i think we're going to have a solar eclipse themed playlist for the chambers field we just felt like this was a really amazing moment in time that everyone could share together. Uh, but again, more info will come out very soon once we have all the logistics. Our K-2 students are going to stay inside and watch it live streamed. We want to make sure everybody's eyes are protected and just aren't 100% sure they'll follow directions to keep their glasses on. So um, a couple of other uh, more serious things. I wanted to mention, and I mentioned this at a ninth grade parent meeting last week when we were talking about scheduling, we are no noticing uh, an uptick in the use in the building and likely in general by our students of a new product called Zyn, Z-Y-N. It is a nicotine product. It's like a little pouch. It almost looks like a piece of um, white gum that sits between, you know, like between the gum and the lip um, and slowly releases nicotine. We've found containers of that, um, et cetera, in the building. It is very hard for us to detect because there's no smell. These Zin packets are flavored, mint, lemon, uh, et cetera. And so we just want to make parents aware that you should take a look at, Aaron, can you actually find a, a link to a picture of it that you could put in the chat so parents can see, um, that you're aware of it and keep an eye out uh, in, in your child's bedroom, in their backpack, in all these places that they might have it. Um, of course, in our Health 9 curriculum, we talk a lot about these substances, but they are everywhere for our children. And so we wanna make sure we're in communication with all of you. As a result of the prevalence of Zin and also, uh, students vaping what we believe is high potency THC. Um, we did bring in our speaker, Stephen Hill, who came in the fall to speak to our ninth graders about drugs and alcohol. We brought him back. And last week he spoke to our ninth graders again about high potency THC and some new research that is coming out, which unfortunately is indicating um, that this use among adolescents is increasing the um, incidence of significant psychological disorders, including schizophrenia, which has uh, incidence in adolescence has increased, I believe, 600%. Um, and they believe uh, that it is a direct result of, of uh, adolescents vaping this very, very high potency THC. Stephen Hill went over that with the ninth graders. He then spoke to our high school faculty, and um, we're looking to possibly bring him back to speak to the other grades as well. He has a special um, he has a special program to do with seniors, which we might bring him back to do during senior week. Um, if students are caught using vaping, they are suspended. That is an illegal substance on school property, and so that is a uh, an offense for which um, students are suspended. And so, as a result, they are notified. Yes. Uh, so something to keep in mind, be aware of. I have an eighth grade son and a 10th grade daughter, and um, I've spoken to my son quite extensively about this as well as my daughter, um, because it's it's really everywhere. And the kids need to be very careful also because we know that some of these products are laced with fentanyl. Stephen Hill, who's a recovering addict um, who went to suffer in high school, was an athlete. 
he one thing he said to the high school faculty last week that I think really was hit home and was scary. He was in high school 11 years ago. He said that if he were in high school today, he probably wouldn't survive because of the uh, fentanyl that is lacing a lot of these substances. So kids are getting exposed to that unknowingly. And he said today, his experience 11 years ago, he probably wouldn't survive it. So that's scary. And it's something I think we should all be speaking to our children about. And we as a school are speaking to students about regularly. Last thing I just want to cover very briefly, um, as many of you know, uh, we have a number of faculty retiring this year. We have an English, social studies, science, the chorus teacher, Ms. Simpson, as well as, um, what am I missing? As well as, yeah. Aaron, what am I missing? Sorry, I'm blanking. Are, you want me to give it? English, math and math. one math teacher. Thank you. Um, so we, I know um, these are beloved individuals who have dedicated a lot of their career to the school and we very much value everything they've given to our students. Um, and we take, and, and I personally take the hiring process extremely seriously. From my perspective, a school is all about people. The most important thing I do in my job is to bring the best people in to teach in the high school. So as a result of the uh, retirement incentive, we were notified very early of these retirements. We were notified at the end of January. And so I commenced, uh, as well as you know the other principals who are involved in searches, uh, the search immediately and worked with the departments. Uh, and we have some incredible candidates. And I'll just share with you that a good number of our candidates who applied actually said things like, you know, I'm very happy where I am, but Bronxville has such a phenomenal reputation. I saw that there was an opening and I just wanted to apply because I, I would love to work here. So that obviously made us feel good and also demonstrates the caliber of candidates that we're getting, not just people coming out of the city with very little experience. We actually have quite a lot of people who are masters in their field who want to teach in Bronxville. Um, and so through the process, which we have engaged in for the last uh, month and a half, uh, we are looking towards appointing a number of people, in fact, this week to positions in the high school, uh, and then hopefully finishing that process in April. We have excellent candidates who, uh, as I look at these positions, I'm always looking to make sure that the people who are leaving, we have people in-house or hire people in who can take on all the amazing work that uh, the retirees have been doing. So rest assured, we're going to have excellent new teachers next year. And uh, I just wanted to give people a heads up on that. I think that's about it for me, Emily, unless there's anything else you were thinking of. Um, no, I think that about covers it. Um, if anybody else has something that they want to add, I saw um, Hillary dropped a note in the chat to remind seniors to upload pictures and videos to for the senior video. There's details on that in your email from a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I think that's it. Um, so thank you everybody for taking time tonight. And as always, reach out with questions and um, we'll see you around school. Thank you. Good thank night. you. Thanks everybody.